Hey there, all you theater trivia titans. Welcome back to Broadway by Ghostlight. I'm Mark Manani, and this is the fifth episode of Broadway Jeopardy! Can you believe it? Five episodes already? The response has been so great, and it's so much fun hearing all your scores and your nice comments. It really, uh, you know, brightens my day. I'm so happy to keep doing these every Thursday, starting at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, so make sure you're subscribed and you hit that bell so you never miss an episode. But enough chatter, let's get right to the game, am I right? Am I right or am I right or am I right? Right, right. This is Broadway Jeopardy. Here are this week's categories. We of course start off with the last game's final Jeopardy category, which is Cabaret. Five all new clues about the landmark musical. That's followed by Art Isn't Easy, a visual category looking at pieces of art featured in musicals. Then we have Broadway Carols, with clues about different people named Carol. Kind of random, but fun. Then it's Screen to Stage, looking at musicals based on movies, a category many of you have requested in the comments. And the last category for the game is British Imports, shows that started in London's West End and then transferred to Broadway. That's all followed up by the final Jeopardy round, of course, but we start with the $200 round, the overture round as I call it, where the clues are pretty easy, I think, hopefully letting you rack up some fake cash before I tear it from you dollar by dollar. I'm just kidding, don't mind me. Starting off the game in the cabaret category, we have this is the name of the club that the MC and Sally Bowles work at in the musical. What is the Kit Kat Club, of course? The latest revival, currently on Broadway starring Eddie Redmayne, reimagined the club, and it's quite beautiful, though personally, I don't think the Kit Kat Club should be that chic. Oh God, he's behind me, isn't he? <laughs> Moving on to Art Isn't Easy, we have the artwork seen here and its artist inspired this 1984 musical from Stephen Sondheim and James Lapine. What is Sunday in the Park with George is the correct answer. George Surratt's painting A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jete is only the focus of Act 1 of the musical, actually, the second act taking place a century after the events of the first act. The $200 clue for the Broadway Carols category is, This legendary carol created the roles of Lorelei Lee in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes and Dolly Gallagher Levi in Hello, Dolly. The correct answer is, of course, who is Carol Channing? Fun story, her iconic line from the film Thoroughly Modern Millie Raspberry. came about when the script called for her to blow a raspberry, you know, or something like that. Is that a raspberry? Anyway, Miss Channing misunderstood and just yelled raspberries instead. The director loved it so much, he kept it in the final film, and the rest, as they say, is history. Raspberry. Let's head over to the screen to stage category and the clue, oh my god, this musical based on the 2001 Reese Witherspoon comedy was filmed for MTV in 2007. What is Legally Blonde? Hopefully you got that one right. MTV followed up the airing of the now popular musical with a reality show called Legally Blonde, The Search for Elle Woods, where, you guessed it, producers of the musical sought out the next star of the musical. The winner was Bailey Hanks, who did indeed take over the role on Broadway. All right, the $200 clue in the last category, British Imports, is... This haunting musical recently closed on Broadway after a record 13,981 performances.
What is The Phantom of the Opera is the correct answer. The longest running show in Broadway history closed after 31 years in 2023, but it's already rumored to soon return to New York, possibly in an immersive off-Broadway production. Hmm, color me intrigued. That wraps up the overture round. Hopefully you all aced it, no problem. On to the only slightly harder $400 round. We circle back to Cabaret and the clue. This Scottish actor played the MC to great acclaim in both the 1998 and 2014 revivals of Cabaret at Studio 54. Who is Alan Cumming, one of the most talented and most generous people around, the multifaceted Mr. Cumming has now added reality competition host to his resume with The Traitors on NBC. If you haven't checked out that show yet, do it. It's so good. And Alan is amazing in it. So how does it feel to be the second best dress guy? I'd say back off. Too much. The next clue for art isn't easy is... The piece seen here by Toulouse-Lautrec was recreated in dance form by Gene Kelly in this classic musical film from 1951. What is An American in Paris? Kelly recreates the Lautrec painting as well as several other famous Parisian art pieces in the massive 17-minute title ballet towards the end of the film. In the Broadway carols category, the $400 clue is, this iconic carol starred in Once Upon a Mattress and Fade Out, Fade In before getting her own TV show. Who is Carol Burnett? The legendary funny woman created the role of the not-so-shy Princess Winifred in Once Upon a Mattress, and 46 years later would return to the show, this time as the antagonistic Queen Agravain in the 2005 Disney television adaptation. Over in the screen-to-stage category, we have This musical is based on a Bill Murray film. This musical is based on a Bill Murray film. What is Groundhog Day? No, I didn't glitch there. Groundhog Day is, of course, the story of weatherman Phil Connors, who relives the same day over and over again. The musical version played the reversing time sequences beautifully, aided by the five separate turntables built into the stage. Wow, five. Take that, Les Mis. Finishing out the $400 round in the British imports category is the clue... In Andrew Lloyd Webber's infamous musical, Cats, the feline ensemble attend this ball. What is the Jellicle Ball? Yes, when the Jellicle moon is shining bright, the Jellicles come to the Jellicle Ball. Whatever that means. I, I want to clarify the use of the word infamous. I meant it more in the Three Amigos way. What does that mean? Infamous. Oh, <laughs> dusty. <laughs> infamous is, is when you're more than famous. Things get even more tricky in the $600 round, but only by a little, I assure you. The clue for Cabaret is, this is the exotic food that Herr Schultz brings his sweetheart, Fräulein Schneider, in the musical. What is a pineapple? I have one of the pineapples that one of the Kit Kat girls danced with during the pineapple song in the 1998 revival of the show. I've got it right here, actually. Look, isn't that pretty? It's all sparkly and shiny. Yeah, it did have lights. This is where the lights were put in, but the lights were removed before I acquired it. But this is one of my favorite pieces, among many, one of my favorite pieces, because it's just such an important part of cabaret. The $600 clue for art isn't easy is, this art here is made by the leading man in this 2007 movie musical featuring the songs of the Beatles.
What is Across the Universe? This 1960 set film musical directed by Julie Taymor and starring Evan Rachel Wood and Jim Sturgis was not a commercial success, earning back less than half of its production costs. Nevertheless, a sequel was announced to be in development by Julie Taymor in 2020, this time taking place in the 1970s and featuring, of course, even more Beatles songs. We'll see if that comes to fruition. I don't know. I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. Moving on to Broadway carols, the $600 clue is this legendary singer-songwriter carol got her own jukebox biomusical, Beautiful, in 2014. Who is Carol King? Beautiful, the Carol King musical is one of the better jukebox bio musicals, in my opinion at least. The show ran for almost six years, closing on Broadway in October of 2019. Up next, the $600 clue in the screen to stage category is the leading character of this musical, based on the 1933 film, weighed over two tons and was 20 feet tall. What is King Kong? The 2018 musical featured a gigantic puppet playing the titular gorilla. The massive marionette had 45 individual points of movements from his eyebrows to his massive fist that required 10 people to operate. It was truly something to behold. And whether you ultimately liked the musical or not, there was no denying that Kong himself was truly spectacular. And the final $600 clue for the British import category is, before Annie, there was this British import with an adorable orphan as the title role. What is Oliver? Yes, the classic tale of an orphan who is just hungry for Pete's sake. Please, sir, I want some more. In the original production, Oliver's friend, Pickpocket the Artful Dodger, was originally played by future teen heartthrob Davy Jones from The Monkees. Okay, it's time to turn up the pressure with the $800 round, but quickly before we start, if you're having fun, please hit that like button right now. It takes no time and it helps me and the videos reach more fine folks like yourselves. Okay, you've hit the like button? You sure? Don't lie to me. Okay, all right. Starting off the $800 penultimate round back at Cabaret with the clue, this is the song that Fräulein Kost sings to Nazi Ernst at the end of Act 1. What is Tomorrow Belongs to Me? That song actually appears twice in the musical, the first time sung by a child, and then at the engagement party in a chillingly effective Act 1 finale. The song is an original one written by John Kander and Fred Ebb for the musical, of course, but they may have done too good a job. Reportedly, several patrons during the original 1966 production were quite upset that the show would use a real Nazi anthem. Tomorrow belongs to me. The next $800 clue in the art is an easy category is... The artwork seen here and many more were showcased in this recently closed Broadway musical about the life of its female artist. What is Lempica? The artist Tamara de Lempica was portrayed by the wonderful Eden Espinosa in a Tony nominated performance. Joining her was the amazing Amber Iman as Lempica's lover and muse Rafaela, also rightly nominated for her portrayal. Moving on to Broadway carols, the $800 clue is, when this future Gilmore Girls star started out her run in the original A Chorus line, her first name was Carol, but it was changed to her current name during the run of the show. Who is Kelly Bishop? Yes, perhaps best known today for playing matriarch Emily Gilmore on The Gilmore Girls, Kelly Bishop's real name is Carol Bishop, and she created the role of Sheila in A Chorus Line. 
When it looked like a chorus line was destined to be a big hit, which of course it was, Bishop found herself needing to change her name in order to hopefully get some film work because of SAG rules and there already being a Carol Bishop working. So she chose to go by her nickname, Kelly, an inside joke with friends. The first time she actually officially used her new name was the night of the Tony Awards when she had them use her new name Kelly for the first time as she won the Tony Award. A pretty awesome way to announce a name change if you ask me. Okay, the $800 clue in the screen to stage category is... The original 1988 comedy film this musical is based on starred Steve Martin and Michael Caine as con men. What is Dirty Rotten Scoundrels is the correct answer. The original Steve Martin film is incredibly special to me and I wore out my VHS copy. Yes, VHS kids. Now Diana, as you were saying, you don't think the poor should be allowed in museums? I think the Ruprecht, poor- Ruprecht, don't take the cork off the fork. Why is the cork on the fork? To prevent him hurting himself and others. Oh. And finishing up this round, the $800 British import clue is this recent fairy tale import added a three letter word to its title for Broadway before critics had the chance to. What is Bad Cinderella? Andrew Lloyd Webber's little love child was simply titled Cinderella on the West End, but for Broadway, she wasn't just your Cinderella. I'm your bad Cinderella. Sadly, critics and audiences mostly agreed with that statement, and the show closed after less than four months. The musical's closing ended a 44-year long streak of Andrew Lloyd Webber having a show on Broadway starting with Evita in 1979. I'm sure he won't be away too long. Is that a threat? All right, my friends, we've reached that point. Buckle your seatbelts and cue the dramatic music. It's the thousand dollar round. I hope you all have been doing well so far. Let's get into the thousand dollar round and the cabaret category. The clue is when Cliff and Sally meet via table telephone at the Kit Kat Club, this is the famous poem he recites to her. Ooh, the correct answer is what is Casey at the bat? That was a really specific one there, jeez. Yes, Sally is entranced by Cliff's American accent and tells him to keep talking, and he recites the famous mock heroic ode to her. The thousand dollar clue for art isn't easy is, paintings like this one seen here have been created off Broadway eight times a week since 1991 in this colorful show. What is the Blue Man Group? I love the Blue Man Group. I've seen it several times. It's a big favorite of my daughter's too. I have two of those paintings, which I love. I just have to not think about how they're made by them spitting paint at a revolving canvas. It's another one of those, those parts where if you, if you nail it, it's amazing. It's, it's such an amazing piece of art. Um, and you get to create it right there live in front of the audience. Finishing out the Broadway carols category with this thousand dollar clue. This carol wrote the music and lyrics for the best little whorehouse in Texas. Who is Carol Hall is the correct answer. Miss Hall wrote the score for Whorehouse as well as its forgotten flop sequel, The Best Little Whorehouse Goes Public, which played on Broadway in 1994, where it ran for only 28 previews and 16 performances. Miss Hall also composed songs for the seminal album, Free To Be You And Me, and several for Sesame Street. Women can fly way up high on trapezes. Women can be roller skaters. Women can help to find cures for diseases. Women can hunt alligators. Up next in the $1,000 round is the category Screen to Stage and the clue... 
This musical, with a score by David Yazbek, is based on a popular British independent film of the same name and features the songs Big Ass Rock and The Goods. What is The Full Monty is the right answer. I can't believe this show has not had a major revival yet. The score is one of Yazbek's best in my opinion. For the musical, the film's original Northern England setting was changed to Buffalo, New York and starred Patrick Wilson in the lead before he became a Hollywood star. And the final thousand dollar clue for the British import category and the game is... This musical melodrama about long lost twins played over 24 years in London's West End, but only two years on Broadway. What is Blood Brothers? Yeah, it's probably a much easier question for any players across the pond than those here in the States. During the relatively short Broadway run of Blood Brothers, singer Petula Clark took over the leading role of Mrs. Johnston, who was then replaced by Carol King. The twin brothers in the show would eventually be played by real-life half-brothers David and Sean Cassidy as well. Okay, Broadway babies, how'd we do so far? Tally up those scores because it's time for the final Jeopardy round. Wager any amount you'd like. Here is your final Jeopardy category. We have Pulitzer Prize winning musicals. Okay, has everyone made their wagers? Ryan? JM? Joy? Yeah? All made your wagers? Okay, here is your clue. This 2009 musical with a score by Tom Kitt and Brian Yorkie features the songs I Miss the Mountains and Superboy and the Invisible Girl. The correct answer is, what is next to normal? Yes, the eighth musical to win the lauded Pulitzer Prize for drama, Next to Normal is a brilliant but heavy show focusing on wife and mother Diana Goodman, a delusional bipolar depressive as the script states, and her family who has to deal with her illness on a daily basis. The show currently has a much talked about revival in London. We shall see if it makes the journey back to Broadway. How did you all fare for episode five? Are you as rich as a Warbucks or is it the hard knock life this week? Make sure and let me know in the comments what your score was and feel free to throw out any category suggestions you might have. You never know, I might use it. And if you had fun and maybe learned something, please hit that like button. And if you got at least $1,000 clue right, you are now honor bound to share this video on social media. It's, it's very serious, you must do this. A gigantic thank you as always to my patrons over on Patreon. Next Broadway Jeopardy will feature a Patreon chosen category. If you wanna be a part of that, the link to my page is in the description. If you wanna nerd out about theater with me, you can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at Bway Ghostlight. I do a daily poll over there, that's a lot of fun. But until next time, I'm Mark Benani. This is Broadway by Ghostlight. Thanks for playing.